in Montreal with Jean-Paul Gaultier, an exclusive interview and museum tour with the last remaining French-born couturier. Now I will not leave Canada, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> you can move in with me. I have a spare bedroom for you. <laughs> From Madonna, Gwyneth and Kate to her famous father, photographer Mary McCartney reveals intimate portraits of her friends and family. Sometimes having a famous parent is, is a curse. And in her case, it seems like I think she would have been just as talented whether or not her father was Paul McCartney. <laughs> Plus, a look back at the wild and wacky ways of American Apparel's Dub Charney. The latest from America's most powerful designer, Diane von Furstenberg. And fashionable first aid. A lingerie company gets worldwide exposure with a sexy film that could save your life. legend Jean-Paul Gaultier came to Montreal recently to work on an upcoming exhibition of his fabulous 40-year career. We'll bring you more on that incredible exhibition in an upcoming episode of Fashion Television. But first, I got the chance to get up close and personal with the legendary designer in this exclusive interview. Oh, yeah. ah. How are you? A pleasure to see you. Gauthier's visit to the Musée des Beaux-Arts wasn't just to work on his own show, but to take a tour with designer Denis Gagnon, whose own work is currently on exhibit. With Gauthier's retrospective in the works, he's taking his upcoming exhibition very seriously and is touched by the opportunity. It's very emotional and I love it. And I think what I, I am excited about it, it's because, you know, to be honest, the idea of... Uh, 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 to make an exhibition, for me, I say, oh, it's when you are dead. I was saying, no, never like that. And uh, the idea was like to present or to have a new experience in some way, because it's a creation. You know what I mean? It means like in reality, the, the idea of uh, mixity, of uh, sexuality, of uh, all the, the themes that I always use, there it can be even more clear and more obvious and more um, speakable and understandable. <laughs> The exhibition titled From the Sidewalk to the Catwalk will open at the museum next summer and will be on display for three months before going out on tour. You know, it's not a chronological retrospective, it's more a thematic retrospective on the main themes mm -hmm. he's always been uh, working on. Sort of like the greatest hits. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Over the past 40 years, Gauthier has turned heads with his gender-bending designs, outrageous shows and unconventional models of all ages and sizes. A rebel in the fashion industry, Gauthier loves to stir things up. I love that way of like, uh, uh, come on, uh, using the power of the seduction and playing with him, having a game with it, you know. So uh, it's that attitude of like deciding what you want to do, what to, you want to provoke that I love. When I did the first time my corset dress, it was a big reaction and everybody uh, spoke about it. It was like uh, uh, eight years before Madonna wore it, you know, <laughs> like the, the pointed uh, bra. <laughs> Gauthier launched his first ready-to-wear collection in 1976 and founded his couture house in 1997. Today, he's the last remaining French-born couturier at a major house in Paris. While Gauthier feels honored to have an upcoming exhibition, he has no intention of resting and continues to create and innovate on the runway. Welcome to the wild and wacky world of Jean-Paul Gauthier, who has given all of us these 3D glasses. I'm not sure if they're going to be worn during the upcoming show, but we certainly wore them when we read our invitations. Anyway, we're here on uh, Rue Saint-Martin at Jean-Paul Gauthier's headquarters, and uh, you got to know that he's going to put on a great show for us in his own inimitable fashion. So let's go inside and see what he has up his sleeve for spring 2011. A lot of people are called, you know, Couturier, but a lot of people are designers. Jean-Paul is a couturier and there are not that many. So talented. How did you feel when 
Jean-Louis Jean-Paul uh, called uh, you? I haven't taken it all in yet. Yeah. I still feel like it's a little bit of a dream. And I, I'm really afraid I ruined his show. What are you No, I'm, no, I'm God, completely God, serious. It, I had, we had a good time, oh. and he is... You know, the thing is, is that he is incredible, and like, in every way. You speak your mind, you keep your word, you never let me down. As long as I've got you by my side, I'll never walk alone. For me, it's romance. So it was all about romance, and also about like 3D, and about like big size, and about beautiful women with shapes, and not to be not ashamed at all of their shapes. Yeah. At the contrary, showing their shapes. So it was all about that. Fashionable First Aid, a lingerie company gets worldwide exposure with a sexy film that could save your life. Mary McCartney, a photographer born in the spotlight, reveals the art of capturing fame from the inside out. The latest from America's most powerful designer, Diane von Furstenberg. And a look back at the wild and wacky ways of American Apparel's Dove Charney. I'm an educated hustler. That's it. That's all I am. I'm a hustler thick and thin. Fashion is at your fingertips. The latest in design is a click away. Keep up to date and never miss an episode. Get your favorite episodes and more. Available on iTunes, fashion television. I love taking pictures of people. I'm very interested in people watching and I like exploring with my camera. So whether I'm on a commission doing a celebrity portrait um, or if I'm just wandering around, I'm sort of looking at people and taking photographs of them. spotlight on her family ever since her dad became one of the most famous musicians of all time. But photographer Mary McCartney has always shied away from the limelight. Daughter of Paul and Linda and sister to designer Stella, Mary McCartney started taking pictures in 1994 and has documented the famous people that surround her throughout her 15-year career, from Naomi Campbell and Gwyneth Paltrow to Kate Moss and Madonna. We recently caught up with a soft-spoken photographer at the Staley Weiss Gallery in New York for an exhibition of her work. My mother was a photographer, so I grew up watching her. It just seemed natural seeing someone with the camera on them taking pictures as they went along. And when I got older and I left school and college, she invited me into her archive to help um, edit pictures with her. That's partly what inspired me to become a photographer myself. And there are certain pictures I take, self-portraits or shadows or things like that, and, and I look at them and I think mum would have taken that picture. So it's nice when that happens. And this is Gwyneth um, Paltrow dressed as Madonna. It's one of those mysterious ones. You just think, what was going on? Why was she dressed for that? But actually, the story behind it was that Madonna was being inducted into the um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and, um, and Gwyneth was dressed as Madonna to do like a, a video congratulations. It makes you smile, that picture, doesn't it? <laughs> This one was taken for a fashion campaign for one of my sister Stella's um, campaigns. It's nice because we're sisters, there's a closeness, but also, you know, sisters working together professionally, it's good because we kind of push each other a bit. So, you know, mm -hmm. I like working with her. This one, which I took um, 
of my dad riding in the desert in California. Um, we all kind of love horse riding, but I loved, you know, this, this sunset light, and it's quite nice as a family picture. How is he in front of your camera? Is he self-conscious, or does he, no, he's like, good. relax? Yeah, he's quite, too? yeah, I think often if you know the photographer, then you know you can trust them and you can relax a bit more with them. So, yeah, he, I think he likes it. He's good. Say He's a yeah. willing victim. <laughs> I think that there's an incredible diversity in her work that's very, that's very powerful. And the um, picture of Helen is amazing. I, mean, I know Helen for years, and that, I think that's the best picture I've ever seen of Helen. I photographed Helen myself, so I'm jealous. <laughs> I was quite nervous. I didn't show how intimidated I was. I tried to act brave, but, but really I was like, I hope I get this picture, because be a bit embarrassing not to get a good picture of Helen Mirren. <laughs> Her first book, Mary McCartney from Where I Stand, gives readers a glimpse into McCartney's public and private world, with candid shots backstage, intimate moments with family, and portraits of some of her very famous friends. This is nice because Elvis Costello, he just phoned, he phoned up and was like, I need some pictures for my album, so... It was nice because he likes that kind of style of sort of, of photography where you just sort of meet up and wander around and take pictures. That was backstage at the, the Rock and Roll, Roll Hall of Fame and Madonna was inducted. I quite like the sort of camaraderie and the fun aspect of this. <laughs> is Lily Cole, um, who's a great model. It's one of her first shoots. I think she was only about 15 when this was taken. Joni, Joni Mitchell. Yeah. This was very special because I got to spend a couple of days. She was recording in London and um, I was just taking pictures of her while she was recording and this was taken. This is her, shows the concentration. She's listening to a playback of one of the songs. <laughs> This was um, Stella and I messing around and we'd been out bowling and you can see she's still got her bowling socks on and we just thought we'd sort of play around and take some paparazzi style pictures but you know sisters messing around more than anything. This was my mum's side of the bed. I'm very interested in beds and that personal space. Um, so this was taken when she got out of bed one morning and I love the way the light shone onto it but I like the creases. It's like a portrait without having someone in the shot. <laughs> I think she's an extraordinary. I mean, it's very hard for me because I met Mary when she was two weeks old. <laughs> Trying to put that aside, I think I do think she's an extraordinary photographer. I love that a woman does the sort of shots you're seeing here tonight. We've done a few sessions together and I love working with her. And she's really good. Sometimes having a famous parent is is a curse. It's a real it's the kiss of death for people. And in her case it seems like I think she would have been just as talented whether or not her father was Paul McCartney. Oh, I better get rid of my gum. Okay, I will put my gum down the sewer hole. We don't want to ruin people's designer shoes here at New York Fashion Week. There. There. Okay, was that like the grossest thing I've ever done? It's very exciting because we're not at Bryant Park anymore. For the first time in many, 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 many years, we're at Lincoln Center, the new home of Mercedes-Benz New York Fashion Week, and uh, I think it's going to be good. By entering this venue, you acknowledge and agree that your image may be photographed and reproduced for commercial use. So take that, Lindsay and Kanye and all those people that try to avoid being interviewed. If you come to this thing, expect to be shot. Jeannie from Hi, Toronto, Jeannie. how are you, nice love? Nice to see you. Great to see you. You've seen any of the stuff? I mean, I don't know how much of a sneak preview you get. 
in your privileged position, do you? I have a, a totally unprivileged position, oh. and I see things, but I have no clue other than that they're pretty. Okay, well, that, that's, that's what counts. While Barry Diller may think he's in an unprivileged position, the media mogul is married to one of the most powerful women in the fashion industry. Diane von Furstenberg isn't just a designer and philanthropist, but she's been the president of the Council of Fashion Designers of America for the past four years. A significant leader behind American design, this season she was instrumental in changing the venue for New York Fashion Week from Bryant Park, which has been the prime location for 17 years, to the Lincoln Center. Coincidentally, that wasn't the only new change for Von Furstenberg this season. Well, How does it every, feel so everything far? seems to be new today. It's a Lincoln Center, it's a new place, I have a new creative director, it's a new decade, so it's it's always looked to, nice to look forward. Some say love is gonna take you away. With so many important responsibilities, Von Furstenberg relies heavily on her creative director to help design collections for her label. Earlier this year, it was announced that her creative director of nearly a decade, Nathan Jenden, would be leaving to pursue his own label. To fill his shoes, Von Furstenberg hired French creator Yvonne Mispolaire, who has worked for famous houses like Gucci and Valentino. Their first collection came together on a trip they took to Paris. This collection is, it all started when I took him for a walk through Paris and we went to visit an Isadora Duncan show. And you know, Isadora Duncan is so inspirational because she was the first modern woman of the 20th century. And not only she was a great artist, but it was about movement and it was about, and she looked into Greece and antiquity. So Yvonne and I went to Greece. Some say Iconic. She is the iconic woman that you want to be, you want to emulate, and she's just an amazing, she's an amazing woman, amazing mother. educated hustler. That's it. That's all I am. I'm a hustler's thick and thin. Hey! You know, 25 hey! years on the air, we've met some of the fashion world's most colorful characters. And one of them is undoubtedly American Apparel CEO, Dove Charney. While the company is currently facing financial ruin, partially due to Charney's controversial management, we first visited the L.A. factory in its heyday back in 2003 and found out why this loud-mouthed executive is known as the undisputed king of T-shirts. All right! <laughs> this is my team. This is my team. These guys are good. And they charge me up. They give me a lot of positive encouragement because every time I come here, I go through the whole factory screaming. Hey! This company is more efficient than a prison in China. I have workers here that are earning an average of $12 US an hour or more, and I'm making millions of dollars. Simple. Fashionable first aid. Fortnite lingerie gets worldwide exposure with a sexy film that could save your life. Compression should be one and a half to two inches deep at a rate of 100 per minute. Fashion is at your fingertips. The latest in design is a click away. Get your favorite episodes and more. Available on iTunes Fashion Television. We don't need to put 
you know, angel wings and sequins on uh, on bras to make a make a statement. Nothing screams class more than Fortnite. It's beautiful and it's timeless. Toronto-based designers Christina Remini and Allison Chown know how to make their lingerie stand out from the rest. Not only is Fortnite lingerie handmade in their studio, it's designed for women of all sizes from a female perspective. I think women can design pieces that women find sexy because if she feels good and she feels good from the inside out, then everyone else is going to find her sexy. <laughs> Although the label only launched earlier this year, it gained immediate worldwide attention when its racy video, Super Sexy CPR, went viral. Check for danger before approaching your casualty. See if they are conscious by gently shaking their shoulders and speaking to them. So we released it in the first 48 hours, we got a million views. <laughs> and then within a month, it was up to six million. And what we saw was like 17,000 hits per hour. And um, on the actual super sexy site, it was 25 hits per second. So it actually crashed and melted down our system as well. Look, listen, and feel for breathing. If the person is not breathing, open their airway by lifting their chin with one hand and placing the other hand on their forehead and gently tilting their head back. 10 million views around the world. It's been picked up by Huffington Post, LA Times. Uh, what we thought was really great was the UK Armed Services called and are using it in the armed service for, to instruct their soldiers how to do proper CPR as well. Next, find a landmark between the nipples and begin chest compressions. We can't deny the power of, of, a, of a viral video like that that everybody gets to see. The great thing about the whole thing is, A, we're getting the Fortnite's name out there, but also we're you know, people are learning how to do CPR, which is fantastic. After 30 compressions, give two breaths as before. Continue the cycles until the ambulance arrives or the victim shows signs of life. Fashion is at your fingertips. The latest in design is a click away. Get your favorite episodes and more. Available on iTunes Fashion Television.